Thank you so much for joining Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Would anyone else like to introduce themselves? Hare Krishna Mataji, this is Varsha from Charlotte. Uh, all the rest to Srila Prabhupada, all the rest to Guru Maharaj, all the rest to all devotees. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanva Pranam, all the rest to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, all the rest to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance is to you and all the devotees. This is Krishna Kumari Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanva Pranam, all the rest to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, then go ahead. Hare Krishna Mataji, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, then Namat Pranam, Jai Srila Prabhupada, all glories to assemble devotees. This is Rajabhakti Devi Dasi from Columbus, Ohio. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanva Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining Mataji. Hare Krishna. Would anyone else like to introduce themselves? Hi Krishna Mataji, Dhanva Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharajas. This is Sita Priti Devdasi from Pune. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanva Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, this is uh, Parima from Philadelphia. Hare Krishna, Dhanva Pranam. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanva Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining this morning, uh, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanvat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharajas, all glories to all the assembled Vaishnavas. This is Kirti Dasandri Dasi. Hare Krishna Kirti Mataji, Dhanvat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Flavir Mataji, Dhanvat Pranam to you and all the assembled devotees, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. So nice to see you doing the greeting service, Mataji. Thank you so much uh, for your constant association and inspiration. This is Lalita Ali Radha Devi Dasi from Toronto. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you so much. Dhanva Pranam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to the simple devotees. And thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for joining, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. This is Radha Rani Devi Dasi from Baltimore. Hare Krishna um, Mataji, Dhanva Pranam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Flavir Mataji, Dhanva Pranam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. This is Vinita Gandharvika Devi Dasi from Texas. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Vanita Mataji, Dhamba Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for your beautiful smile and chanting every morning. I love it. Thank you so much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhamba Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Gurudev. This is Radha from Baltimore. Hare Krishna Rata from Baltimore, Mataji. Dhamba Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Dandavat Pranam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. All glories to the assembled devotees. This is Shiromani Nandarani from Qatar. Mm. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Dandavat Pranam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining the call this morning. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji Dhanva Pranam, Shri Lopat Kujay Guru Maharaj Kujay, this is Gautami Ganga Das from Sri Rapids, Iowa. Hare Krishna Prabhuji Dhanva Pranam, all glories to Sri Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining the call this morning. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Mataji Dhanva Pranam, all glories to Sri Prabhupada, all glories to Sri Bhagavad This is Shobha Radhi Devi Dasi from Fredericton, Canada. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanva Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining the call this morning. Hare Krishna. 
हे कृष्णा माता जी दिस इज परम देव की दासी फ्रॉम गुड़गांव इंडिया गुरु महाराज की जय प्रभुपाद की जय Yes, Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. Thank you, Pranam. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining the call this morning, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. This is Radha Damodar Das and Atma Maya from Austin, Texas. Please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Guru Maharaj. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. All glories to all the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhupada Ji. Thank you, Pranam. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining the call this morning, Prabhupada Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mata Ji, this is Ritha Das from Columbus. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glory to Sri Lopra Upar. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dhan Bhattanam. All glory to Sri Lopra Upar. Thank you so much for joining the call this morning. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, this is Vivek from India. My humble obeisance is to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Lopra Upar. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Dhan Bhattanam. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Prabhu Ji, for joining the call this morning. Hare Krishna. Is anyone else would like to introduce themselves? Hare Krishna, Flavir Mataji, Dhanod Pranam, Sri Prabhupada, Kijay Guru Maharaj, Kijay. This is Shama Gauri Devi Dasi from Shalit and... So nice to see you, Mataji. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mataji. Dan Bhattanam. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Mataji, for uh, your kind words. I don't deserve them. Hare Krishna. Has, has the speaker joined yet? No? No, no. no. Okay, would anyone else like to introduce themselves or we can continue chanting? Hare Krishna Mataji, this is Radhika Dasi from New Jersey. All glories to Sila Prabhupada. Koti Koti Pranam. <laughs> Hare Krishna Radhika Mataji, Denver Pranam. All glories to Sila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining the call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Flavio Mataji, please accept our humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and all the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanva Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining the call. Hare Krishna. Is there anyone else that would like to introduce themselves? Okay, well, maybe we can continue our... Uh... Yeah, Hare Krishna. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yes. Is there anyone else that would like to introduce themselves? Yeah. Prabhuji joining Mataji in a minute. Okay. Well, welcome to Bhakti Sangha conference call. Today we are fortunate to have our Prabhuji um, Chaitanya Charan Das Prabhuji. And he is going to enlighten us on the topic of how Lord Nityananda compliments you, Lord Chaitanya, the conservative. Liberal harmony at the heart of our tradition. Prabhuji, have you joined the call? Uh, Tipni Mataji will give the introduction. Okay, okay. So before we hand over the call to Prabhuji, I would like to um, ask Tiffany Mataji to do the introduction to Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Tiffany Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Flavio Mataji. It is good to see you on the call. And Hare Krishna, dear <laughs> devotees. His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu is a monk, mentor, and spiritual author. He has been educated in electronics and telecommunications engineering from the Government College of Engineering, Pune. He subsequently served as a software engineer in a prominent multinational software corporation. 
seeing the prevalent problems of stress, depression, and addiction in overall misdirection, all due to lack of spirituality, he felt inspired to dedicate his life to the cause of sharing the spiritual wisdom of the Bhagavad Gita. He travels all over the world from Australia to America, giving talks on spiritual subjects in universities such as Princeton and Cambridge and companies such as Intel and Microsoft. Prabhuji is the author of the world's only Gita daily feature, wherein he writes a 300 word inspirational reflection on a verse from Bhagavad Gita. As of now, he has written over 1,700 Gita meditations that are posted on GitaDaily.com, and they are read, read through daily feeds by thousands from all over the world. He also answers questions by seekers on his site, The Spiritual Scientist, where he has, where his over three, I'm sorry, where his over 3,500 audio answers and several hundred articles are available. His articles have been published in many national newspapers and his writings in English have been translated into several foreign languages and several Indian languages. He is a member of ISKCON's leading intellectual body, the Shastrik Advisory Com Council, and is the associate editor of ISKCON's global magazine, Back to Godhead. Shaitanya Charan, Charan Prabhu is also the author of 16 books. So Hare Krishna. Welcome to the call, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya, Jnanan Janishalakaya, Chakshurun Malatam Yena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Nama Aya, Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami iti namine, namaste saraswati deve, gauravani pracharine, nirvishesha shunyavadi, paschatya desha tarine, vancha kalpatarubhyasya, trupa sindhubhya evacha, patitanam pavanebhyo, vaishnavebhyo namo namaha, jai shri krishna chaitanya, prabhu nit Nanda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara, Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. So I'm grateful to be here with all of you today. If I, at any time, if I'm not audible or visible clearly, please let me know. So we are discussing today and tomorrow about the extraordinary magnanimity, mercifulness of Lord Nityananda. And I will discuss this from a particular framework. That framework is how within our Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, they are both eternal so they're both eternal manifestations of the Supreme Lord, and yet they embody different moods. Lord Chaitanya's mood overall is the mood of magnanimity. He is Namo Mahavadanyaya, Krishna Prema Pradayate, Mahavadanyaya, one who is extraordinarily unparalleledly merciful. And yet, even within, the, there can be levels of mercy and uh, we consider Nityananda Prabhu to be an even more merciful manifestation of, of that same divine principle. So, in general, it is said that in every tradition there are <coughs> liberals and there are conservatives. Now, some, now these words can sometimes be very easily misunderstood and uh, in some places those who are considered liberals are looked down upon. Liberals mean those who are 
those who are loose those who are relativistic those who are lax that my word might have a negative connotation in some circles and conservatives that word might have a negative connotation in some places where somebody is conservative is considered to be narrow minded or bigoted or very rigid in their very uh, very um, uh, very uh, opinionated in their own views that i am right i know everything however it's not like that so the the perspective which i'll be taking is that how while lord chaitanya himself embodies the mahavadanya avatar even within uh within the manifestation in fact supremely merciful incarnation even within that also this dynamic of liberal and conservative plays around and it is that to some extent while lord chaitanya both lord chaitanya and lord nitananda uh, are merciful but we could say lord chaitanya manifests the conservative side of the tradition lord nitananda manifests the liberal side of the tradition and both of them are together both of them are spreading the mission together in fact on our very altar both of them are dancing together so liberals and conservatives they don't have to be at loggerheads with each other they don't have to fight with each other and this liberal conservative is not just a abstract philosophical debate or just a debate for some people at some levels of the gbc or something like that in our own lives there are times when we need to be strict with ourselves or strict with others also if required and there are times when we need to be more understanding understanding with others and understanding with ourselves so let's try to understand this principle of liberal and conservative as it applies to every tradition and then uh, we will see how it applies specifically to the uh, manifestation of gaura and nitai so i'm sharing my screen here if you see a tradition a tra here you will see the tradition to be like a line coming from the past and then that line it meets with a plane and where the line meets the plane that is the living tradition so the tradition as, as existed in the past and as it is existing at the current moment that is the living tradition and now that living tradition is connected to the past by fidelity by faithfulness and that living tradition is connected with the present by flexibility so flexibility is resourcefulness sorry so resourceful what does it mean that there are certain truths in every tradition that can't be changed and those truths need to be preserved so we can call this as fidelity is faithfulness so if we have a say a high fidelity a uh, sound recorder then as the sound originally was it is reproduced that is faithfulness now faithfulness is extremely important but at the same time flexibility is also required so you can see flexibility to be like the links so the link that connects the tradition with the past is fidelity the link that connects the tradition with the present is flexibility that is resourcefulness so what do we mean here by resourcefulness we see ishla prabhupad himself now there were some traditional rules that sanyasis shouldn't travel across the oceans and there is a purpose for that that if the world is more materialistic in certain areas especially in the western parts of the world a sanyasi may find it difficult to follow the principles of purity of sanyas so it is for their protection but prabhupad went beyond those statements he was flexible he was resourceful and prabhupad wanted to build a temple he wanted to start a center in america but initially he didn't have the resources and he couldn't get the financial resources from india his followers didn't have those resources in, in because they were hippies counter culture they didn't really have a lot of money so prabhupad was flexible prabhupad converted a store front into a temple and in many ways for many traditionalists prabhupad's temple would have seemed to be hey, this is not a temple at all where is the spire on top where are the deities facing the east where is this where is that 
but prabhupada was resourceful he was flexible whatever was available he used it and quite often in that if you go to the lower east side 26th avenue even if you go to that temple now that is being preserved then that is the place from where far more spiritual potency emerged and spread across the world then what has from many other temples which might have grand architecture and might conform rigidly to architectural norms about the about temple building so flexibility connects us with the contemporary world and fidelity connects us with the tradition and both are required for a pers- for the tradition to still living now if you consider more concerned with fidelity they want to they the living tradition the conservatives are very concerned that the traditions stay connected the living traditions stay connected with the past the traditional world so that is their priority and that's why they are very very concerned whenever anything is uh, seems to be changed the conservatives in general are very cautious about changing things now liberals are also cautious about changing things but liberals have a different priority their priority is to connect with the contemporary world to connect with the contemporary world means that this is where people are at and this is how we this is what we need to do to connect with the people who are liberal with the people who are at that level so traditionally for a sanyasi um, <clears throat> to uh, to actually a sanyasi is served by and cared for by people who are themselves expected to be pure one of uh, once i was had taken i had i was a part of a yatra of some young devotees who had gone to puri and suddenly it started it was at the amrath yatra it suddenly started raining and okay so when it started raining at that time what happened was that the devotees took uh, found some shelter and they went to nearby gaudiya math and it, the building which they went to in was a gaudiya math and when they went in there they saw there was a sanyasi who just came over there and the sanyasi was going to take prasad so he looked like a very venerable sanyasi so one of the young one of the younger devotees says can i serve prasad to that devotee that sanyasi and the assistant of the sanyasi said are you second initiated he said no then you cannot serve a sanyasi oh so now that was the standard they were following over there now if you look at prabhupad what to speak of having second initiated devotees cook for him prabhupad was cooking for people who were leave alone second initiated first initiated they were not even pre initiated devotees they were people who were just living lives which would be considered very impure by traditional standards in fact for many of those early early seekers who came to shri prabhupad their only regulatory principle was to break all regulatory principles which is all kinds of activity that we would consider impure and yet prabhupad served food to them lovingly cared for them and after that they would just treat it as a hotel and walk away and prabhupad would wash their plates so this was prabhupad's compassion so the point is a devotee is concerned both ways to stay connected with the past and not just the past to krishna who is eternal who has manifested through the tradition in the past and a devotee wants to stay connected to the people in the present and the way i will present uh, i will the point which i am going to make is here that lord chaitanya and lord nityananda they manifest a particular way of practicing bhakti and sharing bhakti and what is that way that you now while lord chaitan both of them are a part of the of the immensely devotional pot, pot, devotionally potent uh, and devotion uh, immensely merciful manifestation of the lord still there is a difference and the difference is that while both of them are merciful so they manifest the devotional devotional mercifulness but chaitanya mahaprabhu is relatively speaking culturally conservative and nityanand prabhu is culturally liberal
I'll explain what I mean by this. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was devotionally very liberal in terms of being always available, traveling far and wide, and giving bhakti to everyone. But at the same time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was quite careful. He was quite careful in terms of who he, who, for example, who he took prasad with. So I show this over here. Yeah. So Lord Chaitanya was culturally conservative. You know, when he went to, when he went to, uh, uh, to Varanasi, at that time, most of the people over there were Mayavadis. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there and he had their own, uh, only two people who were devotees at that time, everyone else was Mayavadi. And Prabhupada says that, uh, that Varanasi is like the Vrindavan of the Mayavadis. Vrindavan of the Mayavadis means that that is the place where all Mayavadis congregate and delight. And there were these two devotees of Lord Chaitanya and now, one of the associates of Lord Chaitanya over there was a Brahmana and the other was not a Brahmana. So what did Lord Chaitanya do? Lord Chaitanya stayed, Lord Chaitanya wanted to give his mercy to both devotees. They, he had, by his plan, asked them to go to Puri long before they had actually, long ago, so that eventually when he would come, there would be someone uh, there to be with him. But while he was there, you know, he stayed at the house of the devotee who was not a Brahmana. But every single day, Lord Chaitanya went to the house of the devotee who was a Brahmana and took prasad over there. At one level, we can say through this, he gave his association to both of them. At another level, what we see is he he respected the sensitivities of the local local cultural environment over there. He did not disrupt that cultural environment. In terms of what? That traditionally it was expected that a sannyasi should take prasad only at the house of a brahmana. And so it is described now, if we consider this, what I'm saying, let's look at the Chaitanya Charitamrita briefly. So, in a dream, Chandrasekhar Acharya had seen that Lord Chaitanya had come to his home. Therefore, in the morning, Chandrasekhar went outside to receive the Lord. And while Chaitanya, now this is outside Varanasi, when Chandrasekhar Acharya saw that the Lord has come, says he he became delighted, he fell at his feet, and he invited him to come to his home. And then Tapan Mishra also heard that Lord has come. That is Chandrasekhar Acharya and Tapan Mishra were the two associates of Lord Chaitanya who were devotees and who were in Vrinda, who were in Maya, who were in Varanasi. So then he went to Chandrasekhar Acharya's house to meet him and he invited Lord Chaitanya to come to his place for taking lunch. So then, uh, in the meanwhile, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's assistant Balabhadra Bhattacharya, he took house at Prasada Chandrasekhar Acharya's house. Chandrasekhar Acharya was not a Brahmana. And then Tapan Mishra requested that, please do not accept any invitation from anyone but me. And so every single day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ate at the house of Tapan Mishra. So now, of course, this is at one level a personal reciprocation with Tapan Mishra. Uh, but you can think about this from a perspective. So if some sannyasi comes to your house, that person is staying at your house but never takes any prasad at your house, we would consider to be, you know, what did I do? Because he didn't want to agitate the minds of the, uh, of the Mayavadis in, in Varanasi. He eventually wanted to reach out to them. He wanted to elevate them to the level of bhakti. And the only way he could have done that was by, uh, first of all, earning their respect. So if they thought that this person, Sanyasi, he, he doesn't even have a sense of discrimination. He doesn't understand where to take food and where not to take food. He doesn't understand what is pure, what is impure. Then they would not have considered him even worthy of conversing with. 
already they were criticizing him your sanyasi why don't you study vedanta why are you chanting and announcing on the streets like this so that is a core devotional principle chaitanya mahaprabhu didn't didn't uh, change that he still chanted he still uh, he still danced he still sang on the streets but at the same time he showed deference to the local cultural norms how by accepting that okay if this is what you want this is what you will respect then i'll do that uh, so he chaitanya mahaprabhu was culturally conservative so he he cared in in one sense we see that chaitanya mahaprabhu is very very conscious of public perception so in one sense now in today's culture if we want to be conscious of public perception we will have to be somewhat liberal at least in major most of the world but you know the point is that he was conscious of public perception and for that in order to make sure that the public perception doesn't become negative he was culturally quite conservative that's why he would not even meet pratap rudra that where pratap rudra was a king and he wanted to meet him but chaitanya mahapu said that what will people think that if a sanyasi is hobnobbing with a wealthy person like a king they will think does a sanyasi have any renunciation at all so he didn't do that and even when he gave his mercy to pratap rudra it was only when pratap rudra came in the garb of a ordinary person now in contrast we see nityanand prabhu nityanand prabhu is you could say culturally radical he was a avdhut now some people there is a different opinions whether avdhut was technically a sanyasi or not in the traditional sense now prabhupad says he was avdhut sanyasi now avdhut sanyasi is not exactly the same as like a formal tridandi sanyas or even ekadandi sanyas it is a person who is avdhut as the word means it just means going beyond the Uh, rules and regulations of society so he was avdhut but still he was in the renounced order and ityanand prabhu you know, he in one sense remarkably flouted cultural norms there are times when ityanand prabhu would dress in extraordinarily opulent clothing and there is that beautiful story which we might discuss in tomorrow session but the point is that he by the way he dressed he was dressed so opulently that some thieves were attracted to him a thieves might respect lord chaitanya from a distance or they might not care for him he is a sanyasi what do i got to do with him so so the people whom chaitanya mahaprabhu couldn't reach nityanand prabhu reached by extraordinary manifestations of mercy so he is dressing himself in the in very opulent clothes in you know, not just opulent clothes he would wear costly ornaments and you dress like a king and that's what perked the attention of these thieves oh maybe we can rob from him and they came again and again and they tried to rob and in trying to rob lord nityananda they they thought about him they realized his power and eventually they were delivered and eventually nityanand prabhu had what is what can be called as a robbers the robbers and they would preach to them and they would make them into devotees So Nityanand Prabhu did that because he was culturally radical. He was culturally liberal. He defied the normal cultural norms of how a, a devotee, what to speak of a renounced devotee like Avdhut, should dress, and he dressed in remarkably different ways. So he reached to people who would normally not be reached out to. Similarly, we see that there is a statement in the Bhagavad Gita where he says that. even if lord nityananda goes to a goes to a liquor house liquor house or a brothel i will not doubt lord nityananda i know that he is going there to deliver those people now why does he make this statement that why, uh, at one level we can say it is a statement of faith in lord nityananda and definitely it is a statement of faith but it is also along with that a warning a warning that don't apply material vision to judging lord nityananda because lord nityananda would do many remarkably provocative or questionable things and he was purely motivated his motivation was compassion and in fact lord chaitanya tells lord nityananda also that is one of the reasons you know that you know you please become a grahastha as a grahastha you can reach out to people whom 
I can't reach out to. And now Lord Ityananda had no interest in becoming a Rahasta. But he, he accepted that for what purpose? To reach out to people. And then that's what he did. So we could say he, that at that time for somebody who was in, in the renounced order, whether it was a technical sannyas, in the, in the traditional sense, or the audhut sannyas, whatever it was, the sannyas. And for, in some ways, even now, if a sannyasi changes the ashram, that raises eyebrows. So we could say at that time, it would have been much more. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did that out of compassion. We see that Lord, Lord Chaitanya, sorry, Nityanand Prabhu did it out of compassion. Lord Chaitanya was a grahastha and he became a sannyasi so that he could reach out to more people. And Nityanand Prabhu was a sannyasi and he became a grahastha so that he could reach out to more people. So that's resourcefulness. What is required where that varies from place to place, from according to time, place, circumstance. And this difference between the in one sense the mission is the same sometimes we talk about the mood and mission of Shila Prabhupada yes the mood and mission is important at the same time the two are different that you know, so Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda had the same mission but they had different moods so we can have many different devotees in our movement who are carrying on the mission of Shila Prabhupada but their mood might be different so sometimes we just look at the mood and they say, you know, you, your mood, this, this is not right. This is wrong. You're criticizing somebody as a deviant and so many things. And, and actually this is what happened with Lord Nityananda. You know, we read in the Chaitanya Charitamrit that actually uh, there were loving conflicts between Lord Nityananda and Advaita Acharya. And these were very sweet and transcendental. Both of them had the deepest respect and the deepest love for each other. Both of them knew that you know, they, they all they both loved Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya loved both of them. But at the same time, you know, they had their own uh, personal and peculiar ways of dealing with each other. And sometimes some of their followers couldn't understand. Advaita Acharya, we could say, uh, Although he was also very merciful and in some ways he was also culturally, you could say again he was devoted. Devotionally radical, devotionally radical. Although there are many other Brahmanas and he said that a Vaishnava like you is far, far greater. But at the same time, in other ways, Adad Acharya was somewhat conscious of the culture and conscious of the people's perceptions. And uh, when you now again, when you talk about people's perceptions, we're talking about which people are we talking about? Because people are not one homogeneous unit. So, so Lord Chaitanya was concerned about, and other the charity to some extent, they were concerned about the, the Brahminical society at their times and how that Brahminical society was going to perceive them. Lord Nityananda Prabhu was not so much concerned about how that Brahminical society perceives them. He was concerned more about how he can reach out to people who have been left out of the Brahminical society. He can reach out to people who have been largely left out of the Brahminical society. Now they have been left, they may have been left out because they themselves left, or they may have been left out because the way they were living, that the Brahminical society turned away from them. Which actually uh, Nityanand Prabhu wanted to reach out to them and to reach out to different people you know, one has to present things differently we cannot use the same message to reach out to all kinds of people of course the core message will be the same but its presentation has to be different at a very basic level the, if we are speaking to people in different parts of the world we may have to present the message in their language so if we go to South America and say people don't know English over there then we may have to speak in Spanish or if you go to certain parts of Canada, we may have to, they may not understand English over there. So maybe French has to be spoken over there. We go to certain parts of India, remote parts, the English may not work there. We have to speak Marathi or Bengali or uh, Odia or Kannada or Tamil or whatever. So now if I say, I'm going to speak in the scriptures in Sanskrit, I'll speak only in Sanskrit. The Prabhupada wrote his books only in English. So I'll speak only in English. Well, if you are too rigid, we will not be able to reach to people. So, so, in a sense, the living tradition is like a dynamic dance of faithfulness and resourcefulness. 
So Lord Chaitanya is the embodiment of that merciful tradition. And he is, in broadly speaking, he and Nityanand Prabhu, there is a dynamic dance between the both of them. Nityanand Prabhu represents the liberal side of the tradition. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu represents the more culturally conservative side. And this is seen especially in the pastime of Jagai and what happens in that pastime? Chaitanya is he's doing ecstatic kirtans and there are many Brahmins who want to be a part of it. And somehow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doesn't let them because he feels that they don't have devotion. But then, then the kirtans start, start happening outside and people start coming for those kirtans and, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inundates the whole of Navadvip with the devotion over a period of time. So those who are who are conscious, who are a part of the Brahminical culture, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by the sheer power of his devotion, removes whatever barriers might be there. So like some Brahmins criticize him, but many people eventually become won over, won over by his spiritual purity and potency. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reaches out to the people who are who broadly are respect who are following the Brahminical culture and they, they are part of the Brahminical culture. But Jagai and Madhai had fallen out of that Brahminical culture. And so they heard Lord Chaitanya's Kirtans and they thought, okay, these people are doing some good things. They would sometimes in fun say Hare Krishna and imitate the Kirtans. But they had no interest. They were not concerned. Uh, like some of the Brahmins were saying, are you really following the scriptures? Where do the scriptures say uh, these names should be chanted? Maybe some other mantra should be chanted. They say, why should why chant any mantra at all? They were not concerned about it at all. So the Tyan and the Prabhu went to such people. And when he went to them, what did he do? He reached out to them at great personal risk. So sometimes some people think Frozen. Yes, Prabhuji. Prabhuji's connection is not so good. Internet problem, who knows? Maybe someone can text Prabhuji. He's, he got disconnected, so perhaps he will rejoin. Yeah, I'm calling him. Yeah, Prabhuji is connecting again. Sorry, I got disconnected. So the internet went off over here. So we see Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, both of them are working together. So I was making the point that a danger and deviation can come not just from the contemporary world, it can come even from the tradition. Now, what do we mean by how can danger and deviation come from the tradition? If you consider not just the specific Gaudiya tradition, if you consider the broad Vedic tradition as it is being lived out in today's world, the greatest damage to the living tradition in today's world has been done by the caste system. And what is the caste system? The caste system is a deviation that has come from the tradition. That means at some time in the past, maybe several thousands of years ago, people started thinking that the caste is determined not by guna karma, but by janma, not by qualities and activities, but by birth. And that has become an entrenched no notion. And that notion is not today coming from the contemporary world. It is coming from the tradition itself. 
So it is not that everything that we get from the past is necessarily pure, and everything that we get from the present is necessarily impure. And nor is it that everything that we get from the present is impure. Uh, uh, not that, and certainly, of course, it's not true that everything that we get from the present is right. So the important thing is to be purposeful. So Lord Nityananda was purposeful. The purpose is to reach out to as many people as possible. So, so Jagai and Madai were left out by the Brahminical society, but Dityan and Prabhu decided to not leave them out. And what did he do? He decided when he heard about Dityan and he about heard about Jagai and Madai. At that time, on hearing about them, he actually became excited. It is described in Chaitanya Bhagavat that his hearts, his eyes became excited with compassion. He said, "Amazing!" He said, "If I can deliver Lord Chaitanya's mercy to these people, these two brothers, and they become delivered, then the whole universe will sing the glories of Lord Chaitanya. And just as in the past, Lord Narayan is glorified for having delivered Ajamil, similarly." Lord Chaitanya will be glorified for delivering Jagai and Madai. So, in one sense, when he reached out to those people, so Har now Haridas Thakur is considered Nama Acharya, and he is, he is, he was himself, you know, we could say from the traditional perspective, outcast, and he was not only accepted by the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition, but elevated to the level of Nama Acharya. But even Haridas Thakur had some hesitation. You can't, you can't go to those people. They are violent. They will attack, destroy. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission of compassion was carried forward by Lord Lord Ityananda. And when he carried that forward, what did he do? He actually wholeheartedly, this he dedicated himself to reaching to places where no one else has reached. And most people would not even think you know, think of reaching there, and that was his. In one sense, for a person who was who was uh, the people who were doing all kinds of reproachable activities, they were they were so impure because of their reproachable activities that Chaitanya Bhagavat says that if people even had the shadow of Jagai and Madai falling on them. Then they would go and bathe in the Ganga to purify themselves. So the idea is that they were very impure, and people would keep a long distance from them. And late, what did Nityanand Prabhu do? Nityanand Prabhu went to them. Now, why did he go to them? Because, because he wanted to be, he wanted to reach Lord Chaitanya's mercy to them. Uh, and the way to do that was he, he had to be culturally liberal. So Brahmanas. In those society would live very purely, and they would not associate with people who are so impure. They might give some discourse, and people might and benefit from that. They might perform some rituals or some sacrifices where even people from people who are impure might come and get some benefit, but they would not go out of their way to associate. An extreme example of this, or extreme you could say perversion of this, uh, the purity being pure is good. Seeking to be pure is good, but being puritanical, puritanical means you know I become more conscious of my purity than others' humanity. I become more conscious of my purity than others' humanity. That means in order to maintain my purity, I look down upon others, I demean others, and then I make people feel filthy. I make people feel dirty, unworthy, and being puritanical is it's very bad. So, when somebody is puritanical, then people get alienated by that. So now, those who have a holier than thou attitude, I am higher than everyone else, and you are all lowborn. Then what happens is you just can't. Uh, we can't actually reach people. At one time, I was I had gone to NIT Raurkela, and they had organized a big uh, big seminar uh, in the auditorium. Almost like a thousand students were there. And after the talk, many of them wanted to ask questions. So I, had, I was staying in their guest room, which is near the auditorium. Many of them came to the guest room, and there were almost um, 40, 50 students who had come. All of them came and met for some time. And there was one boy who was just standing outside. 
and he was just standing outside asking why don't you come in he looked at me the others looked at each other and they looked at me said why don't i then uh, why don't you come inside said uh, can i said uh, yeah yeah if you have some questions please come he said that uh, actually i am an untouchable he said i thought you may not want me to come in so when i heard that i was so perturbed actually got up and went out and you know pulled him into a hug and then brought him inside and seated him right next to me and i answered his questions and then after that one of the boys other boys said that you know we are having a lot of uh, uh, christian missionaries over here they come and he say that when when we even go to the jagannath in raurkela is near orissa the jagannath puri and he says even when we go to any temples Uh, the priests over there they look down upon us they treat us as impure but when we go to a church if at all we go to a church but they treat us they welcome us they treat us as the children of god so why why is this difference like this so why is it that in our own tradition we are looked down upon so it seems that there was a whole group of people somehow they had come for their seminar because it was a more of a like self help kind of talk but they were from the scheduled caste kind of thing and they had quite a reservation or even aversion toward vedic culture so but somehow they liked my talk and then they wanted to come and discuss further so when i heard about it i felt so sorry he said that within their own culture they are within the broad vedic culture they are treated as outcasts and then they go to some other religion they said you are the children of god you are the son of god you are welcome so it is unfortunate that while our philosophy uh, tells ultimately that everybody is equal that we are all souls we are all parts of krishna but sometimes you know we lose our humanity so in the name of this is how things are to be done now there can be valid reasons why say a pujari especially a pujari who is doing deity worship wants to be pure and they may say you know okay i'm going for the altar so please you know keep a distance from me but that can be done in a polite and respectful way that doesn't have to make that i am doing a service which is pure and that requires me to be pure but that doesn't mean i have to look down upon others and say that others are impure no so puritanical means that our concern for our purity eclipses overshadows uh, almost eliminates our humanity and then that can backfire terribly so ritan so we can alienate people if we become puritanical we want to be pure we want to help others become pure but we can't afford to become puritanical so chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy was manifested in different ways to different people now a pujari on the altar or going to the altar may have to maintain certain standards of purity but the same pujari that person is giving a class is going out to people and reaching out to them at that time if a person starts emphasizing too much principles of purity then you cannot reach out to people so just as nityanand prabhu reached out to people whom chaitanya mahaprabhu couldn't reach out to chaitanya mahaprabhu as a lord can do anything and everything and once as chaitanya mahaprabhu did what he did through nityanand prabhu but personally he wanted to manifest a certain a personal particular example and devotionally both of them are merciful chaitanya mahaprabhu from a devotional perspective he was also quite radical as we know in the sang in the kirtans in south india he would just go and embrace people and there is no mention of what caste they were from when he would embrace them he would just embrace them and they would become surcharged with devotion so and they would become permeated so in one sense chaitanya mahaprabhu is also very very magnanimous and in that sense we can also say he is liberal but in that particular context of what are the cultural norms expected for purity chaitanya mahaprabhu focused more chaitanya mahaprabhu focused on reaching out to people of a particular group and, and nityanand prabhu focused on reaching out to people in a particular group and that's how they both reached out to different kinds of people so nityanand prabhu manifests the mercy of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in the way where he was culturally liberal and tomorrow i will elaborate on these two themes of how he delivered the delivered jagai madai and how he delivered the thieves we will discuss further aspects 
of how the conservative and the liberal just as gaur and nitai they are together and they are dancing and on the altar together similarly we all may have particular uh, focuses we may have particular inspirations we may have particular moods but rather than focusing on the mood we focus on the mission and that's how we can minimize the conflict and we can focus maximize the magnanimity whether that magnanimity magnanimity manifests as cultural conservatism or whether it manifests as cultural liberalism the important thing is it manifests as spiritual potency as devotional mercy that elevates and enriches our hearts and elevates and enriches others hearts just as lord nityananda prabhu did for jagai and madai and just as he did for the thieves whom he delivered so i'll summarize what i spoke today i spoke broadly on the theme of how gornitai embody the dance of the culture of the uh, uh, of the conservative and liberal uh, for uh, in our tradition and in that connection i talked about how what is liberal and what is conservative so in a living tradition what connects us with the past is fidelity and that is or you could call faithfulness and what connects us with the present with the contemporary world is flexibility that is resourcefulness so conservatives are more concerned with staying connected with the past and liberals are more concerned about staying connected with the present and both are important so chaitanya mahaprabhu was of course the magnanimous incarnation no doubt but at the same time he was devotionally very magnanimous and he was culturally somewhat conservative i discussed the example of how he was very careful about whom he would take his food from when he was traveling because he was reaching out to some people people within the brahmanical culture so sanyasi mayavadi they would have they would look down upon him so much and he doesn't even know where to take food and they would not have listened to him at all so he did that but chaitanya he didn't want to associate with pratap rudra uh, because he wanted to be respected as a sanyasi and uh, not be seen as attached but nitan prabhu would dress opulently and he even change from sanyasa ashram to to a grahastha ashram so that so he even changed grahastha ashram so that he could reach out to people that others couldn't reach out to so jagai and madai and the thieves chaitanya mahaprabhu were attracted by his magnanimity and similarly in our lives you know, we also discussed how prabhupad was was both conservative in some ways liberal in some ways in terms of reaching out to people prabhupad did what was required and he, he, danger and deviation can come from the contemporary world but it can come also from the traditional world the caste system is an example and if we become puritanical that means our concern for purity eclipses our humanity and that's how we may alienate people i talked talk about example in jagannath puri where people within the hindu broad vedic tradition feel that they don't belong here are made to feel that they don't belong here and then others make them give give them a sense of belonging and then that is tragic so for reaching out to different people sometimes different modes of presentation are required so rather than focusing on the mood if we focus on the mission then we all can dance together in the family of lord in the gaudiya vishnu tradition just as at its start lord chaitanya and lord nityananda are dancing together thank you very much hare krishna are there any reflections or questions hare krishna thank you so much prabhuji thank you so so much for um joining the call on behalf of myself and bhakti sanga we thank you so much for the call do you have a moment to answer any questions or maybe keep, uh let people give reflections the bodies give reflections yes, yes okay. please yes if anyone out there if anyone would like to um ask prabhuji a question or give a reflection please do so हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी दंड प्रणाम और गुरुष्ट शील प्रभुपाद गुरु महाराज वेरी वेरी ब्यूटीफुल ब्यूटीफुल क्लास प्रभु जी एंड यू नो ही नाइसली एक्सप्लेन हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड द मूड ऑफ श्री नित्यानंद प्रभु फॉर प्रीचिंग एंड रीचिंग आउट टू द पीपल स्प्रेडिंग द मिशन ऑफ शील प्रभुपाद हाउ शील प्रभुपाद was so compassionate to the um, people who are meat eaters and uh, doing so many things but thank you so much prabhu ji thank you happy to your service thank you for the opportunity
So, Shambhavi Mataji. Yes, Kadamu Priya Prabhu, you want to say something? Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna Prabhu, this is Kadamu Priya Das from Montreal. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, Prabhuji, um, my question is, like we understood about uh, liberal and um, conservative and uh, this uh, understanding. So a devotee, like which path a devotee should take, Prabhu? Should the devotee be liberal or devotee be conservative or a mixture of both of them? And also like uh, I've seen like, for example, like we live, we, we live in a house and uh, some materialistic people, they come to our house and they say, oh, Prabhu, why did you buy like house in this direction? The house should be in uh, northeast or this direction. You should do worship in east, or east direction. You're not supposed to do this. You're doing bhakti, but you don't know all these things of Vastu. So Prabhu, what shall we do in this case, Prabhu? Okay. So, so should devotees be liberal or conservative? Well, depends on a lot on Deshi Kala Patra, as we say. See, to some extent, uh, it is not entirely a matter of choice. This liberal conservative is not just within, say, our 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 movement. It is everywhere. Now, if you consider uh, the mainstream US politics, you know, there is one party which is considered liberal, the other is considered conservative. And then it's not just in politics, it's everywhere. I'm a writer, I study the English language. So in English language, you know, what is the duty of the guardians of the language? So if somebody writes a dictionary, are they meant to be liberal and include new words or new meanings of words? Or are they maybe meant to be conservative and say, this is the right meaning of the word, or this is the right word for this? Language keeps changing. So, and if a language doesn't change, then the language dies. Greek and Latin died because they didn't adapt. English has become among the most widely spoken languages in the world because it adapted. It included more and more words. So the liberal conservative, so the idea that English, this is the, these are the words and these are the words only we should be used. That's the conservative. No, these are new words in the language. That's liberal. So it's there, this is a dynamic is that everywhere. And uh, to some extent, even this has been studied by neuroscience and other things. Uh, by psychologists and neuroscientists. So it seems that to some extent, our brains are wired in particular ways. So, so we could say that uh, conservatives are more concerned with orderliness and uh, liberals are concerned more with openness. So things should be done in an orderly way. That's the concern of conservatives. Liberals are more of openness. You know, okay, it's a new opportunity, new place or new way of doing things. Let's explore. So what happens is, that uh, this is so to some extent it may not be so easy for us to change so some of us may be naturally more conservative some of us may be naturally more liberal what we can do and what we sh should genuinely try to do is not claim that this is the only way this is the way that works best for me that, that, and we, we can be honest in admitting that to ourselves and admitting that and telling that to others you know i i need my space to do things this is the way I will do things. But the problem comes when the liberals start criticizing the conservatives or conservatives start criticizing the liberals. So, so to some extent, we have to see what causes us agitation. So if say we are individuals who value orderliness more than openness, and then if somebody criticizes us for being disorderly, that will... Uh, that will agitate us too much. We will ourselves not be able to tolerate disorderliness and we will not be able to tolerate that criticism that you are being disorderly. You are not doing things as they should be done. So for example, the criticism which you mentioned, that okay, in your, in your home, the altar is not in this way, not in that way. That's basically a criticism that things are not as they should be. Now, okay, things were done in a particular way in the past. Is that the way they should already always be done everywhere? Well, maybe, maybe not. That has to be that has to be decided. It's more important to have an altar in the home than to have an altar in a particular direction only. So now, for some of us, now one way you can know whether we have we are we have that conservative orientation or that liberal orientation. See, we all will be criticized in life, but certain criticisms will hurt us more than other criticisms. 
so for example if i am a writer i value language very much and if somebody criticizes me that uh, you know your english is terrible that will annoy and anger me much more than say somebody says no, you can't sing properly well i know i am not a i am not a singer i can't sing properly because that's not what i am good at that's not what where my values are invested so much i i i i know singing is important but i i can't do that so somebody criticizes me for that that won't affect me so much so similarly for us two things we can understand to decide you know if some what is it that disturbs us the most sometimes disorderliness disturbs some people the most for some people for some other some other people closeness you know why are you so rigid like this why can't you why can't you be really adjustable that disturbs them the most and similarly for some people to be criticized you are so close minded you are so narrow minded that is an unbearable criticism for some other people that you are disorderly that is an unbearable criticism so what disturbs us in the world around us and what disturbs us from the people around us that can help us get a sense of whether we are we could say wired more toward conservatism or wired more toward liberalism so we are individuals in our tradition now we don't have this point to go we don't have the room to go over there but i have a separate class on this that how in our tradition bhakti nanak thakur is much more liberal bhakti san sudha ko relatively speaking was more conservative and in some ways uh, prabhupada was quite conservative prabhupada bhakti nanak thakur was intellectually quite liberal and prabhupada was intellectually quite conservative so now we will need to explain that but the point is again these are all transcendental acharyas and they are all serving krishna but they all have their own personal way of serving krishna now, we are not acharyas of course but we are individuals and we have to we have to do achar in our life so we can't act in a way that is unnatural to us krishna says that shreyan swadharma guna par dharma atsunishtitat he says if somebody is a conservative if you force them to become liberal you know if somebody is you know this is the time we should wake up the duty this is the time we should do this this is the time we should do this this is the time we should do this and that gives them a sense of structure and order in their lives and that makes them feel yes i am doing something worthwhile so if that is what gives them strength and security and stability then we should respect that and and we should let them do that if that's what gives us respect us that's what gives us stability we should also do we should also value that and do that but for some other people you know say if there is opportunity for for some particular service some opportunity for some association and that goes late into the night and then we sleep late and then we wake late and not that we are watching movies late night but we are doing something devotional maybe it takes late night okay it's a little disorderly but you know we are able to reach out to people we are able to do things we should not have been able to do so there is openness so what is more important is orderliness more important is openness more important ultimately devotion is more important and establishing the devotional connection is more important so we have to see each one of us how best we can establish the devotional connection and accordingly we we mold our lives the dami buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayantite if we are prayerful then krishna will give us that guidance how best we can serve so if somebody especially wants to reach out to new people then to some extent they need to be liberal if somebody feels that i can i don't have that inclination to be liberal then they don't have to the best thing is we can have our way of practicing bhakti but we don't make say insist that this is the only way that the conservatives can also be practicing bhakti very earnestly and they will also be compassionate and liberals can also be practicing bhakti very very earnestly and they may also be strict in their own ways but their definition of strictness may be different from the definition of strictness for the conservatives so we find the space within ourselves with the, for ourselves to practice bhakti and we move forward that way so does it answer your question yes prabhu ji thank you so much prabhu thank you very much kalam ji okay so yes uh, we have maybe we can take i don't know how much time we have 